Hello, and welcome to the Get Lean and Eat Clean podcast. My name is Brian Grin. I'm a certified health coach, trainer, and author. And this podcast is for middle-aged men and women looking to optimize their health and get their bodies back to what it once was 10 to 15 years ago. I will give you simple, actionable items to get long-term sustainable results. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. All right. Welcome to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. My name is Brian Grin. I hope you had a great weekend and happy Tuesday. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, hope you had a chance to listen to my interview with Darlene Green. We went all into stem cell activation patches, how they can work for certain conditions. It's really helped improve her, her husband's health along with herself and many more. So if you've never heard of these stem cell activation patches, I highly recommend you listen to my interview with Darlene Green. That is episode 332. Now, on today's micro podcast, we're getting all into sleep because we got a sleep expert coming on Friday, and I wanted to touch on some, some cool studies along with some tips to help improve sleep. We've talked about this in the past, but I think it's really important to just reiterate the fact that this should really be your number one priority when it comes to your health. I think as I've gotten older, I've realized that this should this is something that I really focus on, uh, making sure that I have a sound sleep routine and that you know this is like essential to <laughs> to not only having a great day but also great workouts, good recovery, and much much more. So I pulled out a cool study that was showing in the Guinness Book of World Records the longest anyone's made it with sleep deprivation is eleven days. Right. And if you think about if you had like a crummy diet for all your life, and we all know people who have, you know, you could live where you could live 70, 80, 90 years old with a crummy diet. I'm not advocating that, but it just shows you how essential sleep is. And now, what I found from most studies is that the sweet spot for quality sleep is between seven to nine hours of quality sleep. And if you're on the low end, like less than, well, not on the low end, but less than six hours or greater than nine hours, this is when some issues can come into play. Um, this where this is where it can affect your body composition and people who tend to have more body fat, higher body fat percentage, uh, t- tend to actually sleep worse. Um, and so I think it's not always correlative, but I think it's important that these all go hand in hand, right? And so people that do have higher than normal body fat percentage, this could be affecting your sleep. So um, just keep that in mind. Obviously, I'm sure you've heard it before, between seven and nine is the sweet spot. Um, There are some interesting studies showing that there was one where they took 11 healthy men in their 20s, pretty much sleep made, made them sleep less than about four hours of sleep for six straight nights. And what happened was at the end of it, their insulin sensitivity got so bad, it was as bad as a 70-year-old di- pre-diabetic. So just that's, just that's just for six straight nights of sleep deprivation. Now, I'm, not, I'm assuming that it's not most of us aren't doing this, but it just shows you how your body can really get affected by sleep. So also, too, we got to just understand why, why are we getting bad sleep and sort of digging deep into that. I talk about having a food diary. I think it's important to have a sleep diary at least for a week or two. Just get a feel for how much quality sleep that you're getting and just record it because something that happens with sleep is it, it's cumulative. You, I don't know if you've ever heard of something called sleep debt. Sleep debt's something that essentially it's almost like think of it as you know having debt with your with with your bank or um, you know every time you go to sort of a bad night's sleep, it adds up over time. Stress is the same way. Stress is cumulative as well, and sleep is that you know sleep is the same way. So when you're getting um, consecutive nights of bad sleep, this adds up over time. Now, the positive is you can gain that sleep debt back by having adequate quality sleep. I'm sure we all know that when we have a bad night's sleep, it might take a night or two, but if you get a couple good quality nights in there, you're back to normal. Um, So that's something to keep in mind. And I think a diary is a good way to go about it. I mean, now nowadays they have this aura ring or the whoop, so you can also track your consistency through that if that's something that you want to do. I've never used the Aura Ring. I have used the Whoop. Um, I enjoyed it for you know maybe like a month, and then I was like, okay, I, I'm pretty good at judging how how I'm feeling and how my sleep is and and things like that. But it shows you some cool things like HRV 
uh, heart rate vari- variability and and uh, and some other cool stats. But I think if you just go with your gut and understand that um, being consistent is really important. Um, that's one tip that I always tell people. If you can try to go to bed at the same time and wake up around the same time, I think that's really important. Now, obviously, I know it's not a perfect science. And if you have kids and they're getting up, this could this could sort of put a wrench into that. But if you can try to stay consistent with what time you're going to bed, I think that's that's huge. Um, making sure not too much light is coming in is really a big one as well. Um, you have so those, those dark, those night out shades. Um, also, one thing that my wife and I have been using is, is noise white noise um, in the evenings. We originally used it for my dog who was hearing an owl and barking. And we decided, you know what? We really like it ourselves. So now we travel with it. um, And we use that white noise machine all the time. um, The sort of just, I don't know, I think it's helped with sleep, helps sort of drowns out any other uh, excessive noise that might come uh, from the street or from anywhere else. Um, Developing a routine. I'm sure you've heard this at nauseum if you listen to the podcast. Having an evening routine, a morning routine when you're getting out and seeing sunlight um, right off the bat, that would be great going for walks. And then a routine where you find a time where you're going to just cut off eating at a certain time, which is a big one. Um, I always try to cut off eating around 637, and I'm usually in bed around 10, 1030. So if you can give yourself about three hours to digest your food, get your insulin levels back to normal, that'll go a long way as well. Temperature is a big one as well. Keeping a cool temperature in the room, making sure that it's not too cold and not too warm. Uh, We keep ours around 65. I think between 66 and 70 would be a good sweet spot for most people. And then one thing I haven't done and I'm looking into is maybe, uh, I don't know if you've heard of this eight sleep mattress pad where you put it on top of your your mattress. And if you find that it's getting warm, this will help cool the mattress and and adjust to your body temperature to help with sleep quality. Um, a buddy of mine who's, who's good, I haven't come out with his interview yet, Nick Hutchinson, um, he mentioned this, and I'm, this is something probably over the summer I'm going to look into getting. Um, caffeine, coffee, we obviously all know we don't want to drink that too close to bedtime. I think the half-life of coffee is staying in your system is like five to six hours. So you know, if you could be done drinking coffee by one or two o'clock, I think that would be a good place to sort of just cut it off. Now, some people are more sensitive to caffeine than others. I am fairly sensitive. So um, I make sure that if I do have a cup of coffee, I usually do that uh, mid to late morning. Exercise obviously can help um, improve sleep quality. One thing I've been using a little bit is red light therapy. um, And I feel like that's been helping me get into deep sleep. So um, we've talked about red light therapy before. I'm not going to go all into that. But uh, you can get these red lights, um, and I got one for myself, and I've been using that to help with sleep uh, as well. So a lot of different sort of hacks you can go with. Um, I think you could, you could stick to the basics, um, like a lot of things I've talked about already. Um, I think it can go a long way to improving sleep quality, and and then just keeping an eye on on you know how much you're getting per per day or per night, and if you know if if it's a cumulative effect. Just make sure that it's not, you know, overlapping and and happening too often, um, because you know this sleep debt can happen. It's a real thing. So that's all I wanted to touch on today. Um, just some tips to get you into quality sleep, um, and be sure to listen to the interview on Friday because we're going to go into depth regarding that as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me, Brian at Brian And if you're loving the podcast, would love a review. Trying to get up to a hundred reviews this year, we're halfway there. So um, uh, that I would greatly appreciate that and, um, have a great rest of the week. And I will talk to you on Friday with another great interview. Thanks for listening to the get lean, eat clean podcast. I understand there are millions of other podcasts out there and you've chosen to listen to mine. And I appreciate that. Check out the show notes at briangrin.com for everything that was mentioned in this episode. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast and share it with a friend or family member that's looking to get their body back to what it once was. Thanks again and have a great day.